everyone, and welcome to Bookaholic. This is Deirdre Pippins, your one true and only bookaholic. Hi, today we've got a special guest. We've got Robin Witten, who is the founder and editor of Audiophile Magazine. She's going to enlighten us about audiobooks. They do reviews of audiobooks. Who knew? I didn't. And I didn't even think of it. I just thought a book was a book, even though it was on audio book, but just still a book. And I thought the book review itself would suffice, but we're leaving out a special element, the voice that carries the story. So Robin is here to talk all about audiobooks and audiophile magazine. In the meantime, if you're listening to this as a podcast, make sure you download and follow me on Google, Spotify, Apple, or anywhere else you may listen to your podcast. If you're looking and listening on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button to my YouTube channel and click that bell because every time I send up a video, it'll notify you that I'm doing it. And don't worry, we'll have all the information running at the bottom of the screen throughout this interview of how you can reach out and contact me and sub subscribe and support me and Audiophile Magazine as well. So thank you very much for listening and we'll jump right into it after this. Hello, 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 Robin. Hello, hello Deirdre. Deirdre. How's it going? It's a, a great day. <laughs> yes, yes. It's very sunny where I'm at, very warm. I'm wishing it would be a little bit cooler because I do love <laughs> I do love that fall cool weather because I think it's ideal for reading and listening to books. Don't I agree. agree? <laughs> I agree. And I, I'm in Maine. So we have a lot of cool weather. And uh, but we're having a beautiful fall day that's, you know, sunny and bright and the colors are beautiful. So um, wow. wow. Wonderful. The colors haven't hit here yet. So we're still waiting. <laughs> We're but moving them south. Right <laughs> <laughs> well, like I described to the audience, that you are not only an editor, you are the founder of Audiophile Magazine. How did you come up with this concept? Well, the the idea for Audiophile, which uh, sort of was born over thirty years ago, wow. was. Um, a bit from a conversation with our library direct, my library director, who was okay. an audiobook listener, as I was just discovering audiobooks. And he was telling me how the library was beginning to collect audiobooks. This is 1990, about. And wow. <laughs> uh, of course, they were cassettes. So it yes. was the dark ages here. Yes. But. Right. Uh, what we talked about was that libraries were purchasing uh, audiobooks based on the book review, so the review mm -hmm. of the book, and yes. with very little information that was ever being given about the performance and the yes. narrator, the voice. And so we, right. we, we just talked about how that makes all the difference in listening to a book, what, you know, the creative choices that the narrator makes. Uh, all of that. And, you know, right. so at that point, it was like desktop publishing 101. Yeah. You know, oh, you yeah. could make a yeah. newsletter. And so I said, yeah. oh, I can do this. This is a this is yeah. an idea for uh, talking about audiobooks and helping people um, find what's good and interesting to listen to. Right, right. Wow. You know, and when you said 30 years ago, <laughs> yeah. it was like, wow, really? That's, that's just kind of like my mind went boom, you know. I didn't right. even realize audiobooks had been around that long, you know. It still seems still seems new to me. I wonder why that is. Why does well, it still feel new? Well, I think because the technology has made such leaps 
in 30 years yeah. from yeah. all those little cassettes, which, you know, now you can't mm -hmm. even find a player for them. If you have them, the sound <laughs> is terrible, you know, all kinds of things, but people, you know, that's the way they were first introduced to audiobooks, yeah. And then that's with true. CDs, which were better, but uh, cause certainly the sound was always better, uh, but yeah. you kind of had to uh, deal with the discs. And then, uh, you know, by the time uh, in the uh, early, um, uh, really, I think just after two, 2000, when we started to have digital downloads so that yeah. phones, digital files that you can right. have in your phones, now no one even thinks of it. You know, that's Correct. the way that's the way audiobooks come and they go right. everywhere where you go with your phone. Correct. Correct. There's a funny commercial. I can't even remember the brand where a man is jogging with an old time Walkman. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got the Walkman. And, you know, can you imagine somebody trying to listen to a story on that? But thank goodness technology has taken the audiobooks to this type of level. Right. Now, Robin. As I discussed with you in an earlier conversation, I'm a hardcore reader. You know, I've got, I'm one of those people that like to hold the book, to hug the book, to smell the book, you know, crack that bind. You know, I am a hardcore book reader. Convince me and other people like me uh, to listen to audiobooks. Also, uh, full disclosure, I feel like I'll be a little distracted. If I, I can't <laughs> sit down and really listen, or I might even fall asleep. So well, how how can I get through that and maybe listen to some of my books on audiobook? Well, the first thing, um, if we're going, if we're going to, if I'm going to convince you, I need to uh, know a little bit about the kind of books that you like to read. Oh, okay. So we start right there with right. what you already like to read. And right. now I can, if you tell me a couple things, maybe that you're very excited about recently, then okay. I'll start with that. Okay. So historical fiction is my jam. Mm -hmm. All right. And right now I'm, I'm also a, um, what were they calling it? I, I read about five books at, at the same time. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So because it's October, I'm reading a thriller, but I also have the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois that mm -hmm. I'm reading, which is about 800 pages. So yeah. that's historical fiction. So those are the two that I say I'm reading right now. Okay. Uh, so what's the thriller that you're listening to? It's called When No One Is Watching. I think that's the, t okay. the title, When okay. No One Is Watching. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the couple things. Um, with historical fiction, uh, sometimes, and not just historical fiction, but um, in, in fiction where there's a setting in right. the South, for example. Yes. And yes. there are conversations between people who have accents. Okay. And or even like a dialect uh, right. or a, a speech pattern that is written down, you know, yes. written. So I yeah. think of like Zora Neale Hurston right. and, you know, her. Oh, that's a great example because Ruby D uh, yes. read the audio book. OK. Uh, their eyes were watching God. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> so wow. it's written in dialect. And, you know, I can hear dialect and understand it, but I'm right. not sure that as a sight reader of every of the text that I hear it. And what happens to me when I'm reading is yeah. I get stuck. I'm like, yeah. what, what, what's happened? I'm not sure I understand that sentence. So I never right. hear the kind of musicality that yes. you would, that if I wasn't, I would hear it in someone speaking that way, yes. which is what yes. a dialogue is or dial. And when it's written in dialect. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. I can, you know, when you said that, I thought immediately of the Gullah Geechee language. If you're a person who's not from the South yep. uh, and specifically from the coast of South Carolina and Georgia, you're totally unfamiliar with the Gullah and Geechee mm -hmm. dialect yep. and even the people. 
And so when you see that written in a historical uh, fiction, it's hard to, you can, you can, you try, you read it, but you don't have the cadence. Right. You don't have uh, the true sound of it. It's, it's So I can see where you're coming from. That's a great uh, example when you talked about the Southern fiction because it picked up and, and right. brought me to that. Yes, I can understand that totally. And of course, when you're in historical fiction uh, in, say, that's maybe set in, in um, England or anywhere yeah. in the UK, you have all of the regional dialects and accents yeah. that are very important to understanding the class of the right. people that are speaking. Exactly. So exactly. if exactly. you're not, and, and it might not be written in Di dialect in that case so right. there's no clue every word looks the same but yes. if you're if if you've got a scot and you've got someone from southern england they say that word totally differently correct now correct. the author knows that yes right? but as a reader do i know that i mean i right i may be if I'm really good and I'm really paying attention, then I know that. But yeah. in an audiobook, all of that important um, pieces that the author has put in of, yes. you know, what the class of the person who's speaking, you know, what the emotion, oftentimes the emotion of the person who's speaking. That's another thing that's very yeah. important that comes across in an audiobook. Yes. Very good point. Just got finished reading The Hunting Party by, oh gosh, Lucy Foley, I think is her name. And um, of course, the people coming to visit were from London and they were going to a space in, um, I think it was in Scotland, maybe. But I didn't read that with the British um, dialogue in my, in my mind. I just read straight through in, in my form of English. <laughs> yeah. And um, I didn't put that in there, but I can see how that would be an even more great story when you hear the dialects and that. Right. I, that and that's making my peaking my curiosity <laughs> to say, you know what? I would really love to hear that. Uh, that would I'm sure that would paint a whole different picture to the story and to the concept of the story. Um, now, at one time, I wanted to be a voiceover professional. Um, well, you are, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. But, you know, then it seemed like all of a sudden celebrities were doing all the voiceovers on all the Disney movies and on commercials and all kinds of, and the audio books. Um, but you on your website, you have a list of your, um, beautiful golden voices. I believe you call right. it as it were. Right. Uh, and so it puts a spotlight on the people that's doing the hard job with the audio books. Right. Um, they, you know, they get their chance to shine, whereas the people that write the books are always the stars in one yeah. case. But people should start paying attention to these golden voices. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of them. Well, I think what's exciting about, um, you know, as a listener, oftentimes you may not, uh, you know, you are enjoying the, the, the whole story and the, and the mm -hmm. experience, the listening experience, but right. just like you might not know the name of an actor that you have seen in a film or something like that, you, right. as you get more interested and you get, maybe get more interested in that person, you start right. to recognize uh, their face, their voice, the yes. style of their acting. So in yeah. audiobooks, it's very much the same. And and you're right that there are uh, celebrities who are doing yeah. audiobooks from time to time. That's great for people who recognize that celebrity and maybe want right. to uh, listen to that person read an audiobook. But yes. the the uh, really the working actors who, as I say, always make the magic for you as a listener, yeah. um, yes. are, you know, really working uh, in their studios, in studios around the country, around the yeah. world, really. Yeah. And um, that's one of the things that Audiophile really feels strongly about is mm -hmm. it's the artistic choices that, um, say, Simon Vance may make 
or uh, the the artistic choices that Julia Whalen makes in any one of her audiobooks. And right. it can be different. I mean, there there are so many choices, but it, their choices and their choices are excellent. They yeah. respond to what the uh, what the author has written. You know, they right. have a great range of being able to be skilled with dialect and mm -hmm. uh, character voices and all of that sort of thing. They make right. great creative choices. And so they make our experience, our listening experience, great. Yeah. Um, wow. They're, they're, you know, they're skilled. They, they have experience with children's books, historical yes. fiction, mysteries. And you never, I mean, you might recognize it's the same voice. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, I think they are, particularly our golden voices, are always uh, responsive to exactly the story they're telling, that exactly. one specific story. Yeah. Right. Now, I can understand how, say, someone reading a memoir uh, or a biography would be one voice. But of course, you have multi characters in books. <laughs> so, how do you handle that? You know, um, does the person change their voice for different characters, or do you have to do a multi? Or how, how does that work? Well, you have you have as a listener, you have choices of all of those things. I mean, many oh. of the um, audiobooks are done with a single voice. I mean, a great wow. example of that is uh, Harry Potter. All of the Harry Potter titles were done by Jim Dale, who is one oh. man, but there are hundreds <laughs> of voices and characters that he does through all of those books. Wow. Um, and so it might as well have been a full cast. It wasn't. Yes. It was just one guy who wow. is brilliant. One of our, also one of our golden voices. Yes. And, you know, he, and then... Also, you can find uh, multicast uh, stories that are produced. Um, it might be an adaptation. I mean, one of the things, uh, if you like science fiction, Neil Gaiman uh, has a spectacular um, new story that's based on the Sandman. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and that's a full cast with all kinds of uh, really amazing, I mean, some celebrities, a lot of really great actors. You know, you can you can have everything. There's also, I'm thinking, what we call um, an ensemble performance, yeah. which might be a group of actors who um, are not actually interacting. Okay. So they're not actually speaking to each other. It's okay. like one point of view from yes. the father. And then yes. in the next chapter, there's a point of view of the mother. Those might yes. be um, a, a different actor. Right. And right. so you're hearing the different points of view read mm -hmm. by different uh, actors, narrators. Yes. I can understand that. That brings back to me the Lu Lucy Foley books. She writes yeah. like that, mm -hmm. a character and their point of view, and then another character's the next chapter. She does that in the in the two books that I've read of hers, The Guest List and The Hunting oh, Party. Oh, yes. Yep. That. Yes. Okay. So that's, yes, I can understand that. Now, let's talk a little bit about your reviewers. So your reviewers, of course, not only review the book, but they review the voice. Tell me a little bit about that process. So we, we all our reviewers, we have um, maybe almost 100 different people reviewing. So lots of different points of view. And um, but they all have the same sort of charge in that we are reviewing the audio book. So we want yeah. to make sure that each review talks about the listening experience, who mm -hmm. the narrators are whether they're doing a great job, whether they're connecting with you as a listener, um, right. whether the casting, you know, seemed perfect or a little off, or there are, um, you know, many things, but it's about trying to explain enough about what to expect. So right. we're recommending it. Why am I recommending it as an audio book? It right. is because the character voices are so great or yes. the emotional connection that the narrator has to each 
each one of the characters is yes. so clear. Something yes. like that. We talk yes. about it. They're very short. Um, yes. You know, <laughs> but we're either trying to say this is great. Go ahead and listen. Or, um, yes. you know, maybe you want to read that in print. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I listened to one of your podcasts. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Yes. And it was very informative. I, it was a few weeks ago. I can't remember all the details about it right now, but it was just very clear about um, the banter between both people uh, talking about the right. book. It was very clear. So it's definitely helpful to go on audiophilemagazine.com uh, to listen to some of your podcast reviews. Definitely. Right. Now, I see you have up there. Now, let's take a book that's making the um, book rounds, Cloud Cuckoo Land. Yes. Uh, so that's everywhere. I think it's even made a, a bunch of lists. It's a fine list and, you know, a bunch of different lists. And um, the, I think the man only wrote All the Light We Cannot See. That Correct. was his first book, right? And so what's making that so special as a book and an audio book, because it's profiled on your website. Well, let's see. Uh, for first is it's uh, Marin Ireland and Simon Jones are the two narrators. Okay. Um, and uh, they, Simon Jones is one of my favorite actors. He is a, um, a golden voice. So he's had okay. a lifetime of experience on Broadway. Um, oh. on, you know, uh, uh, and you know, audiobooks for many decades. And Marin Ireland, who is a extremely talented actress and mm -hmm. narrator who's won recently won awards uh, for her audiobooks. So I think it's two uh, narrators who have you know brilliantly connect with this story. Mm -hmm. uh, they get all the subtleties of it. Um, oh. They respond, you know, they respond to the characters, they and they present those characters sort of fully formed. Um, and it's, a, I mean, I think it's because it's two voices that's exciting. And of course, yeah. the book is getting a ton of attention. Yes, yeah. most definitely. And I think it's another uh, huge tome like the uh, Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. It's about 600 pages, I think. <laughs> maybe and it covers maybe eight centuries or something like that. Right. And he dedicated it to librarians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know if I can read back to back tomes, but uh, I'm certainly have to well, get my hands on that. Maybe this is the one you need to listen to. You Maybe see, that'll it be. Is. <laughs> Maybe it is. You know, this is true. So, uh, yeah, you know, so I noticed that audiobooks tell you how many hours right. um, that it will take. Do you remember off the top of your head how many hours for the? Uh, uh, the I don't off the off the top of my head. Uh, okay. How many hours the Cloud Cuckoo Land is? Yeah. Um, but uh, maybe I can look it up while we're talking. But uh, I think one of the things you were asking about, you know, you, you're afraid it might put you to sleep. Yeah. You're afraid you might not, you know, but think about the time when you're, I don't know, um, doing errands or stuck yes. in traffic somewhere or yeah. out for a walk. Um, yeah. you know, taking the dog out, <laughs> what yeah. You, yeah. you know, doing chores. I mean, people yeah. often, um, I like vacuuming, uh, yes. and okay. doing, uh, listening to audiobooks. I love to garden and listen to audiobooks. Yeah. I okay. mean, there I are lots of <laughs> opportunities. Right. I can see that. Yeah. I was, um, I was still taking that sitting down in a chair still with that book, but you don't have to do that. That does give you more opportunities and a lot of more reading opportunities um, right. that way. And also, I think there are a lot of people who are um, knitters and crafters. Yes. Who, yes. when you're doing, I mean, there's all kinds of things where you maybe your hands are busy or mm -hmm. you have to uh, be occupied, but not actually being occupied with yes. um, your mind and what you're thinking yes. about um, yes. and you can listen. Now it's hard. I find it always hard to um, watch TV and knit because if either one of them is too interesting, then I'm, you know, 
I'm going to make mistakes, but uh, with, with, if you've got an audio book on, you're yes. all set. Yes. Yes. That's a very good point. I think I just read that recently of someone and I can't remember who the woman was or where I read it, but she was like, I, I read, I listen to audiobooks, excuse mm -hmm. me, while I'm knitting. So right. I'm like, okay, okay. I'll have to, uh, I've been, I picked up some crafting, some uh, cross stitch. Yeah. So maybe I'll try it then. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great thing. Or chore, big chores like painting a room, you know, if you're doing uh, some decorating and you're painting, oh, yeah. you know, things that go on and on, you don't, you have to pay attention, but you know, a little entertainment wouldn't hurt. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I have to, I'm going to start trying to merge my way over and two, actually thinking about that, because I do have a lot of upcoming projects for Christmas and all of this where I could listen yeah. uh, to an audio book instead of just having the TV running in the background. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll definitely give that a try. <laughs> now, let me ask you, this may be hard. Here we go. What are your top three audio books of all time and why? Okay. Number one. Okay. <laughs> number one. I got them ready. The, okay. Number one, uh, The Golden Compass uh, by Philip Pullman. Okay. Uh, so that is um, the story that the fantasy that was written, I don't know, maybe t over 20 years ago almost. Okay. Um, okay. It is a, a full cast. So it's uh, dozens of actors. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, and it was just brilliantly done the way it was, uh, recorded, um, with amazing characters and the author, Philip Pullman, uh, did, took the role of the narrator within the story, okay. which is very interesting. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, I could go on talking about one of the, these are my favorite all time audiobooks. It's please, really <laughs> please. I want you to dive right in. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the story is fantastic. And what is, is quite interesting, I think uh, people might be familiar with either the original uh, text, the series, but it's also okay. been made into uh, recent um, the HBO series, His Dark Materials. Oh. That's based on the original trilogy by Philip Pullman. Okay. Uh, and okay. so it's, it's a very dynamic story. And then it kind of, the other thing that's interesting about it is it was several were done with full cast and now yeah. in his series, it's actually in the prequels. Um, there are single voice narrations of the story okay. by, um, um, Oh, I'm, whoops. I'm just blanking. Uh, Michael okay. Sheen, Michael Sheen. Okay. Okay. The, uh, the British actor. So, oh, okay. you know, um, that's a whole different thing. Anyway, that's, that's number one. <laughs> that's the, the golden compass. That's right. By okay. Philip Pullman. Right. Okay. All right. Um, and then the second one I would say is the graveyard book by oh. Neil Gaiman. Okay. Which is, um, not also new, you know, I'm listening a lot, but still <laughs> these are, right. these are, we were saying all time favorites. So right. um, the version that I particularly like is read by the author, which is oh. not always successful. Right. But Neil is an amazing, not only is he a, an amazing storyteller, uh, okay. written storyteller, but a storyteller as a voice. He, um, he makes that story unbelievably um, dynamic in a way that, you know, fully represents his written work, I think. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. And do you know, are you familiar with the graveyard book? No, I am okay. not. I'm not familiar <laughs> okay. with the first one. And okay. so this is intriguing that I'll probably will check these out. Um. Yes. So uh, the Graveyard Book is it really was written as sort of a middle grade uh, children's book, okay. but it's sort of based on the jungle books. So it's about a little boy who is raised in a graveyard by the ghosts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, that's the perfect for October. <laughs> it is. It's pretty it's pretty perfect. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Okay. So, so there's 
that. Um, and, and number uh, three. Oh gosh. Well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of jump forward and just okay. Because there's I I have a, often um, the I'm it's a you know love the one you're with. So the most not the absolutely most recent book, but okay. one of the most recent books that I've okay. really enjoyed um, was um, Louise Penny's new. Uh, the madness of crowds, uh, yes, which is read, uh, read by uh, Robert Bathurst, who is an okay. English actor. Okay, refresh my memory about that book. What's the uh, backstory? So, the madness of crowds is uh, it's in the Armand Gamache series, which is okay. he's a pol uh, police inspector in Quebec. Um, okay. And some of the stories are not all set there, but they're set in a, 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 a fictional town called Three Pines. And there okay. are all these quirky characters who live in Three Pines. Gotcha. And then, of course, there's a police, uh, there's a crimes that have to right. be solved. But right. the, the, oh, the interesting thing about that with, with um, Gamache as a character and all of his family and the, his co-workers and these characters that live in Three Pines. I yeah. mean, it's a long running series, um, oh, okay. more than a dozen of them at least. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, I saw recently where she's writing a book with Hillary Clinton. I was like, wow. <laughs> I guess when you get in another <laughs> echelon, you can be Secretary of State, you can be a book writing right. fiction, you can just do whatever you want right. to do. People just hire you for anything. <laughs> wow. I guess wow. so. I guess so. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Robin, it has been fantastic talking to you about audiobooks, and you really have opened up my mind to audiobooks. Your website, audiophilemagazine.com, is a tremendous resource. There's not only uh, reviews for the audiobooks and the golden voices, but you all have so much other things on your website that is valuable to all readers whether you prefer books or audiobooks or can balance both, you, it's a huge <laughs> resource. So I love looking at it. And I now have it bookmarked on my computer. Oh, thank you, Deirdre. That's yeah. great because it is yeah. it is fun. You know, we're just trying to help people find the next great audiobook to listen to. Exactly. So now tell us your social media handles where people can find you also. Uh, so uh, it's audio file mag, um, is our, uh, is our Twitter and okay. also our Facebook. Um, we all, and of course we have the two podcasts, yes. um, and, uh, behind the mic with audio file magazine, which is the short, uh, podcast where we discuss one audiobook recommending every day. Right. Uh, and then the audiobook break, which is a classic audiobook actually from that's been serialized in into a podcast. Oh. So it's chapter by chapter. Uh, so you can listen, you know, a couple days a week and get through. That's another way to get through an audiobook. Um, wow. Right now, uh, we are featuring the Iliad. So when yes. you go back to the ori original kind of audiobooks, you know, things yes. that we've listened to originally that, so that's what uh, is on audiobook break for this fall. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. So I, I really appreciate that. And do you have a, um, um, do you have an Instagram? Uh, we we don't have an Instagram, but we do have a YouTube channel that okay. is um, that is Audiophile Magazine, and it is uh, we have wonderful little videos with the narrators talking about their uh, the audiobook that they've just recorded. So oh, that's sort of fun. Yeah. So you can yeah. actually hear what uh, the the narrator says about doing uh, you know recording that book. Got it. Got it. Well, that's wonderful. Like I said, it's a tremendous resource and I, I love everything you guys are doing out there. So Robin, I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And folks, head on over to audiophilemagazine.com. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. It was great fun.
Thank you. Okay, everyone, what a great day we had uh, with Robin Whitten, who is the editor and founder of audiophilemagazine.com. Head on over there and to their social media. And make sure, like I said before, if you're listening to this as a podcast, make sure you download and follow me on Google, Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to your podcast. I also have a wonderful and informative website, bookaholic.com. That's book-a-holic.com. And follow me on my social media. I am True Bookaholic on Instagram and Facebook and True Bookaholic 1 on Twitter. Uh, and I also have this newly minted YouTube channel. Follow me there as well. And make sure you subscribe and click that bell so that you will be notified every time I send up a video. Okay, thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you next time.